though. Chocolate Paladins with the attack, Love and Devotion with the defense. Chocolate Paladins obviously have match point, let's say. They won their uh, they won their defense. That is a lot of cavalry <laughs> from Love and Devotion. Are they going to sally out? If they do sally out, there's barely any anti-cav for Chocolate Paladins. They've got one Modal, really. It was Pike Militia, but that's not really that good. They can obviously... They've got a jab out as well. I... If they do a full send Sally out now, Love and Devotion, this could be very, very bad for Paladin. They do not look like they've got the setup. For... They do not look like they're set up for a Sally out. Uh, it looks like... Level and Devotion, the Sally out. It looks like they're going to have maybe Javs, IPGs, and Tercios. Guarding the gate with three heroes and everyone else is going to go full send. Okay, this could be spicy. Let's see. <laughs> this could be spicy. Um, the units that Chocolate Paladins have as well is not is not units to defend against the Sally out. So if they don't realize this very quickly, like they literally need to be on the ball. If they don't see it instantly and have all of their guys sat on the supply point, they're going to struggle on this fight, man. Um, let's see, man. This this is going to be an interesting start to the fight. There we go. Everyone's stacked up already. Papa Bear's going to go for the gate controls. Let's see if they're close enough to the gate that you can see the units poking through. <laughs> no, you can't. They're nowhere. Oh, they're on the resupply, though. Have they seen it? They're trebbing. Oh, that's going to get a lot of units. That is going to get a lot of units. 28 units. Uh, cavalry charge coming in. Cataphracts as well from Paladins. A lot of Outriders from Love and Devotion. 58 units died on that. 25 from the attackers. Kapan's just killed Holy Paladin. I mean, all the Outriders being here, though, they're going to start doing work. Um, they've changed a lot of anti-cav and cav themselves now, so this is going to be interesting. Obviously, there's a decent setup in the gatehouse, so they're not going to be able to just push straight through. With the Outriders being out, they've lost 160, though. I think they've just been countered already, you know? Obviously, none of the... the saying that the tower over there still moving. The western side of the tower is still moving as well. Ripcats is up on the wall. Papa Bear's up there with his unit though, so should be alright. As long as he don't get ahead of himself. Although Jewel Blade struggles against thing. Uh heroes wise, love and devotion have dropped down six heroes. The gate has been closed, so all the guys on the outside basically just have to climb and hope for the best now. Um I don't think many of them are gonna get back in the city though. Obviously the attackers are gonna have a hard time getting A though. You got Papa Bear, Ruger, and HNK fighting over here against four enemy heroes. They've only got javelins though, so that's going to be a bit rough. Ripcats is going to town on HNK there. HNK is down. Papa Bear's still got a decent amount of health. Ruger's running away. Ripcats is behind him though. Ripcats is probably going to get him to the fair. Yeah, there he goes. Ripcats. Is good. Ripcats is a very good dual blade player. Right, so Love and Devotion have lost A. They sallied out, lost 252 units. Um, the attackers lost only 109. Obviously, hero is 12 to 1, so a massive difference. But that did not pay off. <laughs> that did not pay off. So Papa Bear is quarter of his health. He's getting chased by a pike and a short sword, and he just went down as well. You have GRZ and Nami, though, in the fight. Um... They might be able to get these two guys. Obviously, Pike's incredibly difficult to kill. They're going to get a couple of the guys down. Jason West is pushing down the stairs. There's no setup to stop them at the bottom of the stairs either. So, Chocolate Paladins are going to get into the city proper. Love and Devotion need to start pushing down and stopping them, letting them get down onto the bottom of the stairs here, right? They're going to struggle to fight. You've got Holy Paladin in the back here. I don't know what unit he's got. Holy Paladin... As of looking on the wrong side, like a douche. He's got Pike Militia, so he's not really bothered. I think he's just here to slow down some of this cavalry back in, do as much damage as possible. He's dead. This, he's allowed his team to basically get off the stairs, man. This is not what you want to be doing, Love and Devotion. They should have been defending close to the walls like basically every other team has done because this is all Trevor Bull look. 
Are they going to see this? They're going to lose Tercios or Shinjis. Very, very nicely placed Reb. Poor placement of the muskets. Now, that might have even been two sets of Shinjins. That, uh, Shinjis there, even. So, Love and Devotion are pushing in now. Hero-wise, the attackers are down two. That has a lot of cavalry from the defenders. That could do some work there. They're starting to clear up some of the points there. Pringles just killed Kapan, though. Big fight going on on the Western Supply. Looks like the attackers definitely have a unit and hero advantage over here. Those flames are going to do work, though. They need backup. Cavalry coming in now. Cataphracts very well played. Getting completely stunned and just coming in with Cataphracts to wipe everything. Flames need to try and concentrate on the Madau if they can. They've got multiple heroes in there. I think that's a good good trade there for Love and Devotion. Heroes-wise, it's 10 for the attackers, 12 for the defenders. Ruger's coming in with some cavalry now as well. Not too many, though. Um, is that blue or red? That's red. Okay. So, Love and Devotion are setting up again now. They did win the fight over here. I wonder if that pike managed to kill some of the flames. Oh, no, the flames pulled back. Okay. The fl fl Keeping the flames light is... Very, very useful for the defenders. Um, I want to check what units are out, but the fighting's keep going on, so I can't check. So Ripcats has managed to jump through the lines. He's going to try and go for the resupply. Oh, no, he's going to jump on Ruger. Ruger's dead. Very bad call for Ruger to go after him. Overlook is going to struggle to kill a dual blade. Um, there's a dual blade and a short sword after him as well. Big fight going on here. Looks like Chocolate Paladins are winning this. Yeah, they push through on one side. They're definitely through. Ambient's about to die as well. They've definitely pushed through there. Where are the rest of the defenders? What are they... Were they getting new units? Oh, they've got cavalry in the back lines here. Maybe they're going to wait for them to do like a big push up to the point or to the resupply and then just swarm them from different directions. It looks like they're going to choose resupply. Obviously short distance to be and then they can keep getting new units and not have to always respawn outside. Well, they'll have to respawn outside, but they can run in and get new. Whew. Right. Unit-wise, the attackers have three units of Shenjis. They've got a couple of units of cavalry, a couple of units of IPGs, a couple of Madao. Defenders have quite a few sets of cavalry. They've got Flames Up, Shenjis, Houndsman, Pike, Imperial Pikes. Right, so let's have a look here. So the Flames from, I think it's probably Broken Vortex, has only got one or two units up for doing work. Cavalry's just charged in. Multiple Pikes sat down here, though. Kapan's in the middle of the fight and a lot of heroes here. Uh, more support coming from the attackers. They've got some Shinjis up on the wall that obviously can bomb over into the resupply. The attackers have now the resupply and the defenders have just dropped 9 heroes, 10 heroes. Um, it looks like the attackers are going to get B. Papa Ambience pushing through now with some cavalry. I don't know if that's Outriders or like Armigas. But there are multiple heroes with Cataphracts on point as well. So they're not going to be able to do that. They've decided to pull back. Um, especially, yeah, Outriders against Cataphracts. Bad, bad fight. You do not want that. The Cataphracts are going to be able to kill them here as well. Oh, the Pikes, though. That could be clutch. Pikes have come in, taken the charge. That's not even a like a, an expect. It's only Village Watchmen as well. So Village Watchmen to stop the Cataphracts from killing the Outriders. Good move. I like that Chocolate Paladins have been extremely aggressive here and just keeping the pressure upon Love and Devotion. They cannot set up a front line. They're pushed through on a point already, like base point. They've got one guy taking B. They're basically going to have control of the endpoint by the time they get B. Uh, Unit-wise, they are fairly even. The defenders are definitely losing the unit fight. Hero-wise, they're only 8 on the field, so 12 are Chocolate Paladins. Chocolate Paladins have got units and heroes all over that base point. The resupply from the defenders has got an avenue to get in, though. But the, defend uh, the defenders, sorry, the attackers can easily tread where Kapan is now. Or Overlook. They are taking control as well, though. Good Treb coming in now. Oh, that's mainly going to hit their own units. Cataphracts coming around there to stop them. Overlook with the flames there is going to be able to stop the cavalry, but they're not going to be able to get in onto the base point. Whew. Rocky has managed to jump on there for a couple of seconds, but he's now dead. Uh, you've got Blackwing coming from one side, Nami from the other. I don't think they're going to be able to get in on point, though, that they have to do something. They've got nine minutes, though. I think even if they get on and stop the cap for a little bit, it's not going to be enough. So Blackwind's managed to get on point. He's just been stopped and he's getting slammed by multiple heroes. Got picked up by them all and thrown off. Kizu managed to get on point but then instantly died. And it's GG. GG. Very, very well played. Chocolate Paladin. Very nice pushes there. Did some work. Whew.
That was a scrap, man. Like, holy crap. I was just constantly having to speak there, man. Like, holy shit. <laughs> Fat boy saying I'm your good luck charm. I need to cast all of the, the Holy Crusaders game. Oh my days, Fat Boy, your games was fucking good, man, as well. I enjoyed your fight against Baguette Munchers and Chocolate Paladins as well, beating Love and Devotion. Both the attack and the defense. Very convincingly as well. This noise is doing my nutting, though. I don't know what that is, but it is not nice. So I'm going to go very quickly over the end plate here. Um, so Sentai Mai, MVP for Chocolate Paladins, 4-110. 113 units. It's Colt, 2-118. Where is Ripcat? Ripcat's only four heroes. Well, only four. Four's still fucking pretty solid, to be fair. On the last game, he had like 12 or something. Absolutely ridiculous. So MVP for Love and Devotion was Papa Bear. Um... So you get 2, 3, 5, and 6, 5. Broken Vortex, 0, 3, 7, and 70. Then the attackers didn't really have many, like, specialists, apart from Shinji's, obviously. But they didn't have, like, a Wedge of Flames or anything. Very well played, man. I'm going to have to get off that bit. That's so, the initial sally out by Love and Devotion, they lost a lot of units out. The initial Treb as well, what they should maybe have done is not instantly pushed out and let the Treb land and then pulled out, and they probably would have got most out. Although, no, there was a Cataphract Charge. That would have actually been the best idea. Unless they'd have, like, just jumped on it with loads of heroes. Sally Out didn't work.